I'm Dave Wandrich, cocktail historian, drinks writer, uh, drinks investigator, whatever you want to call it. But I've been studying cocktails and their history uh, for over 25 years. And uh, eventually I'll get to the bottom of it. The history of the martini is one of those questions that everybody likes to talk about, uh, especially if you're obsessed with cocktails. But the, the fact is nobody really knows the exact history of the martini. We know all the other famous inventions of the 19th century, or most of them, but this one's a little tough. Uh, it probably comes from New York City, we're pretty sure. It seems to be uh, to have grown up at the same time as the Manhattan cocktail in the 1880s, when people got the bright idea of taking their regular cocktail, which was just booze with sugar and bitters, a very strong drink, and, and rolling it back a little by cutting half the spirit and replacing it with vermouth, which was a new product, uh, or at least newly imported in quantity. And uh, that worked really well. It became the drink of New York City. The martini was everywhere in the fancy hotels, fancy bars in Midtown, everywhere that people from all over the world came to see New York at its most elegant, the martini was king. I'm standing here at the new bar at the Knickerbocker Hotel. Uh, the hotel was not a hotel for a great many years, and now it's a hotel again. Uh, back when it was a hotel the first time between 1906 and 1920, this was the premier cocktail bar in New York City. And the martini was the king of drinks at the time. The Knickerbocker made more martinis uh, probably than anybody else. Everybody always came here and drank martinis. Enrico Caruso lived upstairs, the great opera singer of his day, great pop star, really. He used to come downstairs and have a couple martinis uh, in the bar before going out and about and uh, enjoying the fancy and flashy life in New York City. And there were a million other celebrities who did the same.